Right guys, so I'm at the location. Check this out. Testing, testing, one, two. That is insane, I'm getting a connection. Welcome back to the channel guys. Hope everyone's doing well. The colder weather's upon us. You know what that means. It's gonna be radio season soon. So yeah, last year I did quite a bit of CB radio and ham radio um, content and it was really popular. So this year, I think we'll do the same. I'm not promising there's gonna be loads of different content because I've covered a lot of stuff last year, but you know, there's always room for new content and with new products coming out as well, it's all pretty exciting. In particular, this new icon that's, that's kind of surfaced, which does microwave stuff, which then got me thinking, I've actually got some microwave stuff um, technically this is 2.4 gigahertz radios which I never actually got around to test before. Motorola DTR 2450s. So today I'm going to have a little bit of a play with these and see what the range is like, whether they work, who knows. Right, so these radios are actually discontinued now but if you head over to Motorola Solutions website you can actually get some info on them. Um, so you can see here DTR 2450 digital two-way business radio and they're actually under the unlicensed business two-way radio section which isn't surprising because they're supposed to be using 2.4 gig in the ISM band which is um, you know an open band that can be used you know for Wi-Fi you don't need a license to, to operate that. Um, so yeah they're completely peer-to-peer -peer, so they won't need a router or don't need to connect to a Wi-Fi network they'll work out in the open where there's no network or or cell coverage or anything so they're completely independent of of the internet um, you know I thought I'd say that just to, for people that are watching that aren't you know au fait with um, these sort of radios so you've got enhanced coverage optimum battery life digital audio quality these all these marketing things that most radio are saying and um, we've got 11 digit identification which is pretty cool because you can then you know obviously each radio can have a different almost like a phone number so you can call them up um, individually and send messages so what's quite interesting about these radios is we've got this thing here that says private and secure now we know these radios operate on 2.4 gig and they are digital but there's something interesting about these radios that they use a kind of spread spectrum technology a bit like Wi-Fi which means it's virtually impossible to eavesdrop on these radios you won't be able to you know fire up a scanner and listen whereas you could these days find information online you know to de decode some of the other um, protocols that are out there that are digital um, these are super secure there's some also some other rubbish on here which I think is completely ludicrous coverage area 10 kilometers there's no way a radio like this is going to cover 10 kilometers I can tell you this now um, six six and a half miles maybe if you were standing on a mountain and someone else was you know at six six and a half miles away on another mountain with nothing in between it it might work um like that but you're not it's not going to happen through an urban environment it's going to be very very low range i would i would suggest anyway um, but we're going to test that out anyway lithium lithium ion batteries battery life 23 hours again probably is a little bit optimistic there um but yeah nice looking little radio yeah they look really really good um they're nice and compact apart from this this kind of thing that happens um they sort of like chalky thing that happens when it i don't know it seems to happen to a lot of these these sort of radios um when they get a bit older i don't know what that's about maybe it's drying out or something but yeah i've got two of these um the antennas are the standard antennas that come on them they do feel a little bit loose i've managed to kind of secure um these ones i would not uh, who knows if they actually work properly I, I really don't know but we're going to test them out and just see what actually happens so let's fire one up and see I've charged these up they came with chargers as well so this is what they've been set to um, the time is yeah the time's actually correct pretty much um, is that right is the date well, yeah it is the date's right as well so everything's kind of looking okay on that one fully charged battery so they came with chargers they came with desk chargers um, from the eBay seller that I bought these off of and yeah you just plug them in and they just charge up no problem at all so we've got a public group there public one and then I think that there 285 so yeah this number at the top is the radio number so 285 on that one and I'm presuming these are just set randomly and then that's the number for the other one um, so I mean if you did find some <laughs> and, and came into my local area and used one of these numbers then you might be able to get to talk to me I don't know so you've got a volume control on the side here these two buttons up the top um, lots of menu items and other buttons here for different things um, you can get into a menu uh, there's quite a few menu items actually in these radios um, so my info you know channel one 
and that was the coolest thing and then you've got the settings as well so you can go into all the settings as well vibra call um, clock and alarm volume ambient noise these have got some sort of uh, i think they've got like an ambient noise filter um, thing which you know a lot of these motorola's have advanced settings as well um, scan you can scan the things remote disable remote monitor that's quite interesting remote monitor mm, that's not working so yeah maybe that has to be enabled in the software anyway the software i haven't got um so i'm just running completely off of what these have been programmed as you can't do anything with a frequency um, on these they are what they are anyway so there's no danger of this being on a dodgy frequency or something like that they're just going to work on on 2.4 so hit the p to t button and we're transmitting so you can hear me just echo there so the way these work when you actually push this push the talk button they establish a connection with each other so for example when i key up it doesn't get a connection with the other radio there'll be no voice transmitted or, or anything it, it will just say out of range that we can test that if i just turn this off um, and then go back to and then go back to the other radio user not available so it'll always know it will check first to see if the radio is in range that's really cool for a range test because it means we don't have to have two people doing it because um, I'm only on my own today turn this one back on so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just stick one of these in here we're quite this is quite a high location up here I'm gonna stick it up in the window and then walk down the road with the other one and just see see what happens and I'm also going to record the audio on my GoPro so you can actually hear what it sounds like at least um, but you know if I can't make a connection with it I won't be able to say anything so you know I will know from where I am whether I'm actually in range now being totally honest with 2.4 gigahertz in a semi-built up area I, I don't think it's going to go 100 meters I think we're going to be <laughs> the range is going to be going to be pretty terrible um, which is probably why these things were discontinued in the first place. Well, I mean, why were they even really made? That's the other thing. But what's quite interesting is potentially, because you can change the antennas on these, you could potentially do some interesting stuff, go, go up somewhere really high, find somewhere else. These are gonna be line of sight, basically. That's what I'm predicting. Line of sight and you know, you're gonna be okay. But anything with obstacles in the middle, like any microwave signal, it's gonna be pretty difficult. But let's find out, because that's the theory. Who knows? So this is the setup, guys. Totally professional. GoPro balanced on cotton bud box and the radio there. All propped up on a MacBook Pro box. Better move them before they melt. But you can see right in the distance, we've got tree line over there. So we are quite high up. Got me other radio. Let's do this. All right, testing one, right, two. testing one, two. Okay, it's working. Walking right, down I'm stairs. Down stairs. Right, I'm out of the front now, just testing it to make sure there's, you know, it's actually working. The antenna's actually connected up okay. Seems like it. That's connected, yeah. Testing, 100 metres away. Right, I'm about 300 metres away now, in the woods. No, I'm going to carry on walking and get into the clear. Right, so I've come up here to this lovely church and basically the other radio is kind of parallel to here and there's a dip in the middle so I thought by coming up here I might actually get a connection but nah it's too much of an ask so yeah not successful on that so the range was literally up to this point about 100 just over 100 meters and it, it just went straight away and that was that was in a that was amongst other houses as well, so you know, about 100 meters the other side now. So the, the opposite direction to what I was when I first lost the signal, so it's about the same. So it's almost like a complete radius, but no more than 100 meters. So I'm 100 meters the other side now, and look, nothing, because there's stuff in between. So this is literally like complete line of sight. If, it's, if there's stuff in the way, forget it. So you can see it's absolutely pointless using something like this. Oh look, you can see what's coming. For sort of urban environments, you might as well use something like this. This is basically just a freely available PMR446 radio, which you can get from Amazon, and totally legal. You can use it with no license, and it gets the job done. Only downside is everybody can hear what you're saying. There's gonna be schools, everybody uses them, so it's kind of like a public, open 
frequency ban so it's not private not that you should be concerned about privacy if you're not saying anything sensitive like giving away bank details things like that over the air but it also makes a lot of difference to interference if there's lots of people sharing the band then you might not get your message through there might be other people on there and you're just not able to make that connection talking of privacy i've just shut the door the range of these things is going to be greater than the range of these things by a magnitude of what two to three times something like that in an urban environment it's still not going to be great but it's going to be a lot better than this because of the frequency that's used this operates on about a sixth of the frequency of something like this so the penetration on objects is a lot better i'm not going to go into too much detail maybe i'll do a video about that another day but these have got pretty good penetration through objects and stuff so if you've got stuff in between you these will actually work pretty well not perfect but they're still pretty good and if you do use these line of sight they go absolutely miles go check out ringway manchester's channel where he stands on a hill and he talks to people like 20 miles away on standard kind of stuff you can just buy for 30 quid madness anyway what we're going to do now a bit of interesting stuff is we're going to try and put a wi-fi antenna on this bad boy so in order to do that you've actually got to use one of these little um kind of reverse sma connectors or adapters so that you can actually bolt on or screw on a normal sma antenna look at that how ridiculous is that you have someone's eye out with that so these are just common wi-fi antennas that you would use to just improve your signal a bit on wi-fi so let's let's see and we're also going to do this line of sight as well i'm going to and i'm going to try and push the boundaries a little bit we've already seen that we can't get further than about 100 meters down the road well let's try going for the big guns use these antennas and go into a field that i can actually see from my window here and it's in the distance i don't know where it is yet i've got to figure it out on, the, on google maps so this is what we're talking about somewhere over there in the distance in this field so i can see it from here so in theory we should be able to make a, uh, a connection so according to mapping it's about a kilometer away it could be more than that it's definitely not under a kilometer so yeah let's try again with the new antenna and see if it works so slightly more professional setup than i was using before i'm actually going to use one of these antennas this alpha kind of directional panel antenna i'm going to use that on the radio here we we'll just sort of angle that in the direction of that field and then i'm going to try the wi-fi antenna that i showed you and also one of these panel antennas which is an old one i've just opened up because it looked a bit weathered so yeah it looks okay i'm also going to take this one as well and there's another one here next to the other radio out of camera shot so you'll be able to hear if if um you know these make contact versus the others <laughs> Right guys, so I'm at the location. Check this out. Testing, testing, one, two. That is insane. I'm getting a connection. Testing, testing, one, two. That is insane. I'm getting a connection. How mad is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I wonder what it sounds like the other end. So I can definitely tell I'm getting a connection. You know, it's not just some sort of freak thing by just holding that down there, see? And it's saying nothing now. And if I go up here, testing one, two, testing one, two. So about a kilometre away, about a kilometre away. So next location, I'm a lot higher. So there's the church. That's the church that I was at, basically. Um, and I couldn't get a signal. And so we're up here. Let's give it another go. Testing one, two, at the top of the hill, at the top of the hill. Crazy, huh? Right, yeah, so as you can see, somewhere around there in the background, that's how far away um, the home location is. So I'm gonna try something else now. I'll try using the uh, the analog way down, see if, if, um, if you can get a copy of me over there. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Obviously this radio doesn't um, kind of, you know, it'll transmit whether it makes a connection or not because it's just pure analog. So that, just a little test to see how well that's doing. Make sure I'm not blocking the signal. Testing one two, testing one two. Obviously, this radio doesn't um, kind of, you know, transmit whether it's a connection or not because it's just pure analog. So that, just a little test to see how well that's doing. Make sure I'm not blocking the. And this is on digital, this is on digital, so you can see it's bleeped, so it's, it's got a connection. Um, yeah, madness. And this is on digital, this is on digital, so you can see it's bleeped, so it's, it's got a connection. Um, yeah, madness. And there's Epping Green Radio Masts over there. 
So you can see now I'm back in the graveyard, <laughs> back in the church, um, and no connection, no connection at all. So even though this is nearer, it's because there's so many obstacles in the way. Also, the antenna is probably not exactly pointing um, in this direction anyway, but um, that aside, we'll gloss over that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, no connection. Let's try the analog radio now. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing one, two at the church. See if we get it. So yeah guys, absolutely fascinating stuff. I mean, how mad is that? I had an inkling it would work. I mean, you know, I've been doing this stuff for a long time, so I kind of had an inkling it would work, but I thought, I bet it doesn't because of the because I'm filming, as, as Sod's Law would, would kind of dictate. But yeah, what's interesting is obviously the PMR 446 radio, um, you know, could obviously still, you know, be heard despite having a lot of stuff in the way. Um, when you get those things on line of sight, as I said, they just go for absolutely miles. Um, whereas the DTR 2450s, you know, you really need to have a solid connection. Now, lots of people have done this with Wi-Fi, um, long distance Wi-Fi links. You know, if you want to get basically like maybe you live on a farm or something like that, when you've got a big field and at the other end of that field, you want to get a network connection. Now, you can buy these things, which basically make a connection like ubiquity links and stuff like that. So this is a very similar principle, but also it's actually a lot more simpler. You haven't got to fire up a a whole you know computer and a network infrastructure to just make a have a conversation or even share some data like text messages and stuff like that so the next thing i think i'm going to do is fiddle around with the programming software on these and see what what else you can do with these radios because they look quite interesting but yeah what an interesting way to create a private and secure network that's just embedded in 2.4 gigahertz which is obviously an ism band um, where wi-fi is you know you can get a message across and a little ad hoc peer-to-peer -peer voice communication setup that you could use for loads of different things anyway guys hope you found this interesting it was a lot of fun doing and if you want to see more videos like this leave me a comment down below and i'll catch you next time